All right, we're back with Super Auto Pets. I will be taking the Hemomancer on every occasion. We have just gotten 10 pieces. By the way, hello, Chibli. Chibli, ever coming back to play Super Auto Pets? I know the game got a little complicated with the last update. Well, guess what? They have made it even more complicated, which I've been having a good time with. And uh, the animals aren't even real anymore. So, and I'm not going to explain any of it. Let's be a skilled smartphone. I am the Salmon of Knowledge. Holds up Spork. Oh, you're in trouble now, bro. You're in trouble now. Banal, is that true, by the way? Did somebody come up to you in the store when they saw your NL hat and say, Konnichiwa? Because it doesn't make sense, obviously, but it's very funny. I guess because it has the kanji on it. They... <laughs> they assumed, I suppose. It happens to me all the time when I'm in the airport. People always assume I'm French-Canadian. Luckiest draw of my life. Then they tried to read the hat. Something that happens to me when I'm wearing the, the older merch is that sometimes uh, the clerk will be like, do you know what your shirt says? And I'm like, yes. And then they're, it's always uncomfortable because they're like bagging the groceries and they're like, how do you know? Do you know Japanese? And I'm like, no, I just made the shirt. And they're like, you made the shirt? And I'm like, I made the shirt. Then they're like, are you a clothing designer? And I'm like, not really. <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> it's, just, it's kind of, it's complicated. It's not really complicated, but it's too complicated to handle, you know, because I only got like eight things at Whole Foods. Okay, this is, this is the way we go Mana Hound that buffs a warg and we get another warg now it's not a big buff yet but that's that's okay and this is usually around round 3 this is where you start to realize that like any hope that you had of understanding what was happening on the like every single element of every single run that goes out the window so let's just enjoy ourselves now i think we want to run to run a cell and experience a cell two ogopogos It would go crazy, I was just gonna say, to get another one of you. And then roll two times. Wow, I'm still gonna roll because we get a payout out of it, but this is an insane run. Okay, um, I don't know what you did, but like my whole squad is dead, so congrats. <laughs> How did, how did, oh, because this guy, because I have duplicates on my squad. Oh, because I was running two Ogo Pogos like a fool. Visitor. Make all pets. Me when I see the Xenomorph. Visitor. Xenomorph. Hmm? Extraterrestrial. Alien. I, I gotta do the other side of the impression. Instead of the guy who gets the word wrong, I gotta be guy who stares into the camera with unblinking eyes. What's this word? Alien. And this word? Xenomorph. How many did you get right? I feel like I don't want the visitor. I just don't see its merit. I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say it. I simply don't see its merit. I don't know if I see your... Maybe I see your merit. I gotta think about this. Who else we got here? A second mana hound? Maybe I don't mind. This is freaking me out. Does anyone else think that the mana hound sound 
is the sound that plays alongside the Junie Tony theme song in kids' YouTube. <laughs> Junie Tony, you know what I'm talking? No, almost nobody's gonna know what I'm talking about, but maybe a couple of parents out there are like, that's where I know it from, Junie Tony. What's Junie Tony? It's like a, like a kind of animation studio that makes YouTube kids videos. But they, they make videos that have like good lessons, but the songs are cooked. Everyone is like, a, a situation, a situation. When there's a fire in your house, get low on the ground and crawl to an open space. Like there's no music, musicianship at all. It's all just like what to do in an emergency. Relax, I'll handle it. <laughs> so true, so true. They do be going like, you know what, you know what? I'm gonna try ya. My kid just wants to watch Iron Man, Hulk, and Thanos drive monster trucks through paint. I, I completely understand what you're talking about, 100%. My kid is not watching uh, Iron Man drive trucks through paint, but every once in a while, she'll click on um, you like one of those videos that's like... So there's those games that you always see the ads for, where it's like you maneuver an object a a across like three lanes, and it's like, am I gonna go into the lane that's like plus 100, or am I gonna go into the lane that's like minus 1,000? And they go like, they're in minus 1,000 like almost the whole time, and then at the very end, they go like to plus 100. But then like, there's a, a logical extension of that. There are videos of three of those playing side by side, and I put a cork in that, every single time as soon as I see it. Like, if you're gonna watch this with me, you're gonna sit down and watch a story. Like, everyone makes fun of, like, subway surfers in the corner. You don't even realize that, like, kids' YouTube is actually as if it was just subway surfers in the corner, subway surfers in the middle, subway surfers on the side in, like, a six-tile grid. Like, at least the movie with the subway surfers has a movie going on at the same time. But actually, like, my, my kid's favorite thing to watch on YouTube is uh, AI games of Mario Party. Like, the computer just playing Mario Party against itself. Which I think is, like, it, it doesn't seem that bad to me. Because I'm like, on the one hand, she's watching, like, video games, but it's kind of just, like, me watching sports or something. It's like, I don't have, I don't have control of Patrick Mahomes. You know, it's not like I can change what he does. He's going to throw it to Travis Kelsey, obviously. But then what's crazy is I, I thought I would be like a cool dad, right? Because I'm like, can I blow your mind? We have this game. Like, we could play Super Mario Party right now. We could play Mario Tennis Aces right now. She doesn't want to play it. She wants to watch the computer play against itself. More power to her, you know? I'm not going to... I'm not going to force her to be a gamer. I'm not going to push her down that path. If she wants to, then sure, but... You know, she can... She can walk down that cursed road for herself. We're one vampire bat away from becoming the most annoying person to ever play this game. And I'm so ready. Any idea how you would fix the Pro Bowl? Oh, like if I was the commissioner of the, of the National Football Association? This is probably like a popular take. So I don't, why do I even have you on my team? I, I apologize for acting as if this is like a radical uh, piece of wisdom. I think all sports should stop having all-star games, uh, except maybe there should be like one combination home run derby plus slam dunk competition every single year. That's about it. Let's try it. Let's try an evil book. Summon a 6-6 six, six old one that does six damage to all other pets. I'm just now realizing this is going to destroy um, almost my whole squad. <laughs> But it's also going to destroy their whole squad. 
But it's also good. Oh, my dog. Wait, what? what? Well, there's an empty front space, bro. Oh, there he is. Nice hemomancer, bro. Because, like, well, I guess it's also, like, I'm not a kid. When I was a kid, the most exciting weekend of the year was the All-Star Game weekend. Because the skills competition was, like, kind of fun. And then I would always be excited for the All-Star Game. And then I would realize that it always ends, like, 14 to 9. And you're like, you just kind of, there's so many goals, you almost get bored. As an adult, it's annoying because the All-Star Game means that there's, like, no hockey for basically two weeks. And I'm like, I don't really care who wins the All-Star Game at all. So I wish that they just removed it. Now, the Olympics, on the other hand... They're cooking up something with the Olympics. What if we go... Let, let's just try a super dog build, okay? Wow! <laughs> so I'm pretty sure... That evil book will just kill us now. Which is not good. But... If we take a Hydra as our things die, it'll summon other things. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're talking. Evil Book Hydra just makes sense to me. Why don't you get out of here? We want you to get killed by the old one, at which point you will summon Hydras. Hydra heads, I should say. Friend summoned? We've never sold a level 3 pet. It's an interesting archetype, though. They, they had a vampire bat that didn't do anything? Bro, you killed... You killed my freaking lad? What? <laughs> How did that work? <laughs> My lad! Does 12 damage to all other pets. Not on attack, just in general. Okay. Wow! <laughs> Try this. And I don't want any Merlot. Nicolas Cage reading for the Paul Giamatti's part in Sideways. I'm not drinking any fucking Merlot. <laughs> I didn't know I have a, I got myself into that. I had no idea how to get myself out of that at all. Yes! No, okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. You're right. Yggdrasil fruit might not be too bad. Okay, how about a, a an evil book? How about I give one pet the pancakes perk? How about a cornucopia? And you know what? Extra health seems very advantageous considering I'm summoning Cthulhu. You like pancakes? I've, I've become, ever since Christmas, I've become a, a larger pancake guy. Because Kate bought some pink. Oh, no! <laughs> yes! Because Kate bought some pancake mix at Costco, which obviously came with, like, a billion pounds of pancake batter, right? So now I gotta, like, cook more pancakes. They're easy to cook. They taste pretty good. And I always have excess bananas on hand, so putting the bananas in the pancakes takes them to the next level. Plus, my daughter loves pancakes. So when we got time in the morning, I love cooking up a little batch of pancakes. But the problem is, I went through the bacon way faster than we went through the pancakes. So now it's like a, a breakfast consisting exclusively of pancakes. And I'm like... But then if I buy more bacon, it's like, I know it's not good for you. Like, it's not just not good for you. It's like, it's like really not good for you. <laughs> Wait, you should not be on the squad anymore. You could hash a brown? Yeah, but that's way more work than just cooking some pancakes. Is it crusties? You kissed your mother with that mouth? It is it is crusties, actually. This would be interesting. Let's let's throw young Phoenix out here. 
You could just buy frozen hash browns. Wait, now you're talking. You could just get frozen hash browns. I guess because I work at Costco. I gotta say, the Krusties is, is really good. They're cooking something with the whatever they put in there. I guess I looked at the ingredients. It's literally just like flour, sugar, and vanilla extract. But it's some good stuff, man. Oh, they had a phoenix too. Do you have an air fryer? Uh, yes, of course. I'm a 35-year-old uh, millennial man. Of course I have an air fryer. Yes, uh, I will say as well, we are indeed a real maple syrup household. And I'll tell you, I actually, you're going to be mad at me for what I'm about to say. The reason I had previously not really purchased real maple syrup or any syrup of any kind is because it's very expensive. But my mom is a very like, she's a, a natural foods enjoyer. So she doesn't use like any kind of sugar except for maple syrup. So every time she comes to visit us, they buy like a new bottle of maple syrup. They stay for like two weeks and they use like this much maple syrup and then they go, I'm just gonna leave that maple syrup in your fridge. Oh man. <laughs> free bottle of maple syrup. Nine, free 94% full bottle of maple syrup every single time. Infinite maple syrup pack. I'm gonna I'm gonna hard swap this individual. I don't think you're doing anything for us. You are giving us free rerolls, which is at least something. But I'm gonna I'm gonna take you to the next level. You are also gonna do nothing, but that's okay. I um, by the way, I'm just yapping because I basically don't even know like what our team is doing anymore. It's not winning this round, I'll tell you that. Why two dogs frozen? Well, like, I, I was thinking, like, we'd obviously level this lad up. And then you might say, well, like, don't be a fool. What you want to do is have, uh, like, you already got a level three dog. You don't need one of the dogs. Yeah, but if we happen to, like, win the next two rounds, I still want a dog. So I'd have to sell the level three and then run like a level one again. Oh, you're right. It's, it's, it is supposed to do 18 damage, but it's not doing 18 damage. You're not wrong about that. Hear me out here. You leave. Manticore. Isn't this going to wipe your whole team? Maybe. <laughs> Maple syrup lasts a long time unrefrigerated, but Canadians put it in the fridge anyway. Deal, Guiga. I owe you an apology. I thought you might consider changing your ways uh, when you had other larger priorities, but it appears that that was naive of me to assume that a leopard can change his spots. You're out here, you got a new bundle of joy in the family, and yet you're still, uh, you're still at it, huh? Still yapping. Still, still being pedantic towards my fellow countrymen. For no reason, except that we, we deign to exist. I put it in the refrigerator too. It's too late to apologize, okay? Chocolate? 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 Can I get some chocolate for this dude? This is the rare time I'm with the Canadians. Oh, really? Because, um, you know, we fought on the Allied side in the Second World War, so... It's a little bit messed up. You might agree with the Canadians more than you think. I don't know what side you were rooting for in World War I, but I'm pretty sure we were part of the Triple Entente. Eight wins with this psychotic team. You weren't at Gold Beach? At least if I was there, it would have been uh, Juno Beach, by the way, I think.
That's correct. Are you on the side of the architect or the builder? Have we really, like, we, we've circled back to this? I'm on the side of the builder, bro. Because the builder would be thrilled to be an architect, and the architect would feel debased by being a builder. And that's why the builder is based to begin with. It'd be a shiny, it'd be offensive tentacle, I suppose. They both have a sense of purpose. It's true, but they derive it from different areas. I feel like the architect gets their sense of purpose from extrinsic accomplishment, and the builder gets their sense of purpose from day-to-day uh, -day duty, from the, the thrill that comes from merely working. What is going on? Listen, Grandpa. <laughs> you missed a couple of streams this week? Gen Z has passed you by. The culture's moving real quick these days, okay? You don't know shit about what a hemomancer is. You don't know anything about the architect or the builder arriving calmly from their escalator with a sense of purpose. Get ready. It's passing you by. Hey, Ghost Pepper, Ghost Pepper. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going mana mode. Have you seen that Lush has released a salt burn bath bomb? <clears throat> me teaching ESL. Salt burn bath bomb. Me warming up for my portrayal of um, whoever the main character of Death of a Salesman is. Can I get some help on this one? Can I get some help on this one? His name is... His name is... Thank you, Rex Mechanica, for the gift subs. Thank you. Oh, Willie Loman. Willie Loman. Thank you. Thank you, Rex Mechanica. Thank you. Salesman, spoilers. The deal, did you just say I love Lush? I was about to go off on Lush. What is like $8 per bath bomb now and the store gives you a headache just when you walk by it? You know how like when it's nighttime and you walk by a club? You can like feel the sound coming out of the club. That's like lush, but with smells. Like every time you walk by lush is like, your brain is like so perfumed that you can't even think anymore. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. $8 for a bath bomb. That seems like a good idea. That seems like a fair price to pay for a, a ball of, a one-time use ball of soap <laughs> that doesn't even clean you. Anyway, we go there. It's probably in the mall. It's probably like my third most visited store. Because my kid loves bath bombs. But usually we'll get like one bath bomb at Lush and then my wife will buy like a pack of bath bombs on Amazon that is probably made with like nickel sulfide or something like that and it's like 12 bucks for 16. Bath and Body Works is worse. I, maybe someone could explain this for me. I just want, like, uh, I want an explanation, I guess. Every time at the Pacific Center in Vancouver, British Columbia, Bath and Body Works has a line out the door. Like, there's a couple of stores that always are, are at capacity. Some of them I kind of get. Like, Lululemon sometimes, they're at capacity. It's a very popular brand. In Vancouver, everybody wears athleisure. Uh... Canada Goose has a line. I get it. It's a lot of, I say this without disrespect, there's a lot of tourists at the Pacific Center that are like, I'm in Canada. I should probably buy a Canada Goose jacket, even though I don't even know if the company is from Canada. But there's like that, it's the same with the Apple store. It's like a big lineup outside of it. Um, but Bath and Body Works, every time I'm like, I, I just genuinely don't understand. Imagine NL in a Hmong Cleasy. Our daughter is now, by the way, we're like making no progress, but that's okay. My daughter's at the age now where she's in like, I don't know, like six or seven activities a week. And every single activity, I do see like a different kid wearing a Monkler jacket. It's not the same kid every time. It's usually like mom is dripped out head to toe in like Celine 
driving a Range Rover. Kid is like head to toe, like a, a Munkler jacket, which is probably not the way it's pronounced because I'm sure it's like Swiss or something. And then like under the jacket, it's like Burberry head to toe. And I'm like, bro, get your kid the fuck out of the community center. <laughs> Can't you do like some private shit, bro? Your ass really taking like group art class at the community center? Man, fuck you. I got the H&M sweater, Costco socks. I am wearing doer pants, though. New Balance shoes. Roots hat. <laughs> or uh, baseball cap from Winners. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We were kind of cooking on this one. We've got like a pseudo mana build, but it's not really like a mana build. We, we could turn it into like a mana build. We'd definitely dump you. Give even more mana to the mana warg. I'm so mana, even this acronym. And you know what? Good things come in threes. Holy. Never mind, I'm cooked. The jackrabbit and the builder. <laughs> no, no, we win. We win. I'm wearing a thrash tank top and Rick Owens. Jack Dorsey! Jack Dorsey in the, in the chat. Jack Dorsey, I have to ask you an uncomfortable question. Do you remember in 2021 when you tweeted that um, hyperinflation is coming and it's going to affect us all in ways we can't possibly uh, fathom? Well, it's three years later, brother, and uh, they're back at somewhere between two and three percent. Would you like to? Would you like to respond? How, librarian, how did you have that? How could you have possibly had that lined up? The speed with which you brought that is actually uh, troubling, Griffin from the Brussels Griffin, from the French meaning Griffin. That's, I'm just gonna say that I'm impressed. So that's a little spooky dooky with it. Can I ask you, this is a serious question, I, and you'll know it's a serious question when I ask it, but are you using um, Google? Because I thought Google was like too washed to, get results like that in the modern era. Half and half? What's the other half? Is the other half Bing or either that or I just search straight on Twitter? Oh, okay. You just got to parse out the right keywords. Can I tell you something? Kate, are you in the chat? I don't want to, I don't want to criticize you without you having an opportunity to defend yourself. I feel like I am, maybe I'm old or maybe I'm right. Those are the only two options, okay? I, if you were to say, hey, find a restaurant in this neighborhood, how would you find it? Would you go to Google and type restaurants in neighborhood? Or would you go to like Google Maps and zoom in enough until like the businesses started showing up and type restaurants? Maps? My ass is old. Okay, I'm, I'm old and I'm wrong. I feel like I'm such a text-driven Andy. Like I'm, I'm still coming to terms with like apps. I would rather run everything from like the start menu or the run menu or like the command line or something like that. Like what, watching my kid use YouTube and it's because she's like still illiterate. 
I get it. But it kind of like drives me crazy because she's like, Daddy, I want to show you a video. And then she clicks on a video and then scrolls through the related videos until she sees like what she wants to see, right? It's like relational browsing. Like rather than having it, having a, a search term that she's looking for, she just starts, she goes to like the website and then just clicks on things that are contextually related until she gets to where she wants to go. And I'm very much like a, I'm a keyword driven Andrew where I just type every piece of information about something that I'm looking for that I know so that Google takes it all and synthesizes it and spits out like the exact result that I'm looking for. But I think that if you're a keyword Andrew, I think our time is kind of past. I think the relational browsing is actually like the way of the future and it kind of scares me. Okay, well, here's the thing. Chimera is going to be insane, but we could also run Vampire back because it's the best unit that's ever existed. Voice and image search are going to take over soon. I saw, I don't know, it, it was the new Samsung ad maybe, or the new Google Pixel was like, it showed a dude and he like saw a cool lamp that he liked and he was trying to type into search. He was like, cool red lamp with an accent on the top. And then it came up with a bunch of like fucked up results, which it, that's a Samsung ad. I was hoping it wasn't Google because I was like, hey, my brother in Christ, you know, you made the search engine, right? So when it brings up a bunch of ads and like unrelated SEO stuffed Chad GPT generated articles, you know that you were the one in the kitchen making the soup, right? So like, no wonder the search sucks. But anyway, sorry, I'm kind of, I got off on a tangent. But then it shows that like you use Google Lens and he like circles the image and then the, it searches for it and then he buys the lamp. Is this actually something that people want? I'm asking sincerely. Because I, I have become like Brad Pitt from the big short where I'm like, I feel like every step in technology is like, we invented something that's going to make your life easier. And I'm like, does it make life easier or does it make it easier to buy something? And they're like, it's yeah, you got us again. It makes it easier to buy something that doesn't, I, I've never seen like a lamp and been like, I gotta have that. I don't know if, if I'm in the minority or something, but I could imagine if that was out when Drive came out and everyone wanted Ryan Gosling's jacket. Holy. Okay, you're obviously cooked. You're a genius. Do you need a Rambutan or do you need nine mana? For now, I think we'd like nine mana. Did you see the guy with the Drive jacket at the Parliament? I did not. Uh, but you have correctly surmised that that is something that's relevant to my interests. <laughs> Rambutan me. Oh, actually, we're cooking here. I mean, it's not like that big of a deal. It's just more like, I don't know. Doesn't anybody just Wikipedia what they're eating while they're eating it anymore? I'm in a position of weakness because all of my content is supported both by direct support and also advertisements. <laughs> but <laughs> well, this shit is pissing me off, bro. I do that. It's a great thing to do. I think it's a good. I know it sounds insane. But if you really think about it, it teaches you relevant stuff about your life or stuff that's interesting to you. You eat a sandwich every day. You've never been eating a sandwich and been like, I'm going to Wikipedia what's the history of sandwiches. And yet you've eaten a thousand of them in your life. You're, you have no interest whatsoever in scratching the surface of history that led to the sandwich being created. What are you going to look up instead? Fucking video 900 of Hatsune Miku singing some fucking song. 
It's not even her on stage. She's uh, do mo-capping that stuff in a bunker somewhere in Akihabara. It's just an avatar. I'm Googling best super auto pets teams for this weekly. It's the same thing with the, the Apple Vision Pro. All I, I'm trying not to just be like a reactionary, but it's all like very close to dystopia for me. The people are like, check out how it's going to reinvent your life. You know all that invisible dirt you're vacuuming up? Well, we can make it so you'll see that you've missed spots in your Apple Vision Pro. Hey, you know when you're cooking pasta and you have to remember two separate timers in your head? You don't have to remember them anymore. Look, they're right in front of your eyes. As long as you strap these fucking goggles to your forehead the entire time you're cooking and the steam is blowing into your face... Now, it might be one of those things where it's like, yeah, yeah, these are the early implications or the early applications. But in the future, yeah, yeah, in the future, your ass is going to be like, hang on, I can't cook. I got to charge my fucking Apple Vision Pro. And then when you put it on, it's going to have two timers that you downloaded from the App Store. And then every time you snooze a timer, it's going to pop up a 30 second advertisement that you can't get out because it's in your field of view. And then you're going to talk to your friends, you're going to be having some cyber beers, and you're going to be saying, can you, can you remember what the days were like before we had Apple Vision Pro, brother? They got, that. do you see the virtual calls where they got all the people's digital avatars on Apple Vision Pro? I don't even want to talk to you on FaceTime with like my real face and your real face. I don't even want to talk to you voice to voice. I want to send you like a 100 character text message that's like, I'll be there in 15 minutes and then I'll show up in 15 minutes. But maybe I'm, maybe I'm the, the Luddite. But I'm not getting that shit unless Kate gets it. Then I'll try it out once and be like, that's cool and then probably never use it again because I'm a little lazy. But let me think about this. Consider me uninterested. I just don't get it, man. Like, I'm sure there will be something eventually in VR where I'm like, oh, that looks like a cool application of it. But it's still like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there is a part of me that like every year that goes by, I'm like... If they had it in them, they would have done it by now. <laughs> this is how we get old people that can't use tech? Yeah, but the, when you're 13, it's easy to be like, you know, oh, you're out of touch, grandpa. When you start to become grandpa, you're like, why did they make the fucking TVs worse? You used to just turn it on and then turn the channels. Now, sometimes I don't even know how to find shit on my own TV because the TV I bought has like a little panel on the home screen that has advertisements on it. And I'm like, I never got this shit. And then someone's like, dad, it's an, it's an advertisement. And I'm like, well, why is my product playing an advertisement to me? It's over-designed. Like, I don't mind coming up to speed with new technology if like the new technology is demonstrably adding some value to my life in exchange for having to learn it. But I'm not going to learn it just so like some punk kid who can't even dunk a basketball is like, you're out of touch. You know, you're not based just because you're 17 years old. You're just contemporary. To become based, you have to derive principles within yourself and then live according to those principles. So you got to give me like a good reason to get an Apple Vision Pro and like it will amp up my vacuuming is not a good reason. And I literally like in my entire life, I don't think I've ever forgotten about like the pasta on the stove. Maybe I burned a quesadilla from time to time, but that's fucked up because the first side of the quesadilla takes like 80% of the time to cook and the back side of the quesadilla takes 20%. So sometimes you do the calculation in your head and you're like, I'm going to give it the same amount of time on both sides. You fucked up because the pan got hot over the course of the first part. So then, anyway.
You sound like my dad complaining about me getting my first computer. And you sound like some fucking hardline Solana user that's like, you sound like Benjamin Franklin going out with a kite and being like, hey, Benjamin, why are you flying a kite in a lightning storm? Like, you have to prove that the invention actually has merit. You can't just be like, well, they said that about the toilet, too, and now there's one in every house. Like, you got it. You can't just argue from ad hominems, bro. So what is it? Is the pasta timer going to change my life? Or is there another app coming out that's actually going to win me over? People have been using VR goggles for years. I know they're using them. What, what, what does it have for me, though? I know it's like, oh, dude, I'm so sick of video games where you press the X button to swing a sword. Instead, I go like this. Ting. 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 And then, I look, look, dude, you look down and there's a real potion bottle on your belt. And you grab it. You go like that. Like, that's cool. Once or twice. I'm not saying I'll never adopt VR. I'm simply saying it's got to be better than Vacuum Simulator Pro and you'll never burn your pasta sauce while you're waiting for your noodles to be done. They got to give me something. What about listening to Destroyer? Now you're talking. Now you're talking. Because I was like, no disrespect. Kate and I used uh, the HTC Vive before literally like 99.9% .9 of the population. We, get, we did a tech demo with game developers in Vancouver who built Fantastic Contraption with like one of the HR Geiger ones where like there's like a seven inch diameter cable that plugged right into your brain stem that had to hang onto the ceiling. And while I was doing it, I this was like 2015 or something like that. I was like, this is going to change the world. As somebody who didn't understand engineering at all, inherently in my brain, I was like, this makes perfect sense. I can experiment with like taking apart an airplane engine or something like that and then putting it back together and it can give me feedback in real time. And, you know, I can see what things would actually look like instead of having to translate like text to visuals in my head. Maybe there's like industrial applications for that that make sense. But they, if they're going to hit the app that causes mass adoption, for me, it's not going to be FaceTime, visible timers on the screen, or I'm vacuuming up coins like some kind of fucking lab rat that's like, I just can't focus on vacuuming. Can you just put some kind of Skinner box in it so if I vacuum up enough coins, I can make it look like my vacuum is like a laser vacuum? Like, I already fucking figured that shit out, okay? Maybe for people that are younger that haven't had to build that kind of like tenacity, that will help. And I'm not even against it. But I'm just saying I already solved that like in the firmware. <laughs> I can clean the bed. They, they already have that. They already have the chore enhancer. It's called Bluetooth earbuds in a podcast, okay? They just got to give me something a little bit more exciting. And it's not going to be shooting the bow and arrow. They'll, I'm sure they'll come up with something at some point. And then I'll be like, ah, oh, why didn't they, they need a second one. But they got to get the first one first. I think there's a global market for five computers, maybe. Ryan, you got me all wrong. You, you need to learn how to debate. Again, it's the same. What's, what's the counter argument for the dudes who are all in on Monero? You know, who say like, well, I've, I've got my net worth in bonk coin right now. Hey, that's pretty stupid. You know, they laughed at Thomas Edison, too, when he said he was going to invent the light bulb. That's true. They've also laughed at a bunch of stupid ideas. Like, that does, it's a statement that inherently doesn't mean anything. You have to have it, like, you get... Instead of being like, this is how people felt about old technology, how about telling me why it's going to change the world? I'm waiting for the non pasta I would love to get onto it. Nobody knows yet. Okay, well then, as far as I'm concerned, then I'm right for now. <laughs> Maybe it'll change. <laughs> but for now, I feel... 
I feel like it's right. I didn't say the tech is worthless. I said it's worthless for me. Maybe you suck ass at vacuuming and cooking pasta. And that's not to say, again, that that's all the technology is good for. But you got to tell me one of the things that it's actually good for. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep talking about the pasta timer and the vacuuming. Or the dude who is doing his laundry while watching Spider-Man in his field of view. Is the Peloton not just a gamified bicycle? It's, well, it's not really gamified, the way I use it, for one. And secondly, no one's like, there's going to be a Peloton in everyone's household. Whenever someone's like, I'll just use a real bike, I'm like, fucking go ahead, by all means. But I'm like, I'll just use my eyes. People are like, you would have been the dude taking a steamship across the Atlantic Ocean after they invented the jet. I'm like, I don't know. I can kind of look at a jet and be like, holy shit, that takes a seven week trip and takes it to like seven hours instead. That's kind of crazy. I can see the utility, but apparently my ass is not a forward thinker because I can remember that the noodles take eight minutes to cook and the sauce is just done when you pour the noodles into it. I just gotta, you, if it was, if it had practical applications, which it might, you would be able to tell them to me instead of making personal attacks on my character. That's all I'm saying. You're actually, in my personal opinion, you're strengthening my argument by just insulting me instead of attacking my position. It's hard, I was waiting for a reply, but then I realized I'm arguing with everybody, so like every reply is in response, but... <laughs> Plus, I am not always anti-technology, you're right. I thought Quibi had a chance. Now, I was wrong. It made sense to me, bro. Vertical videos. Everybody, everybody's watching content on their phones. Vertical videos. We need vertical TV. It's the way to go. Sometimes I'm optimistic about tech. Doesn't mean it always works out. Hang on. I am to Salmon of Knowledge. Holds up Spork. I was in a Quibi. I had to track down the producer on LinkedIn and get him to pay me the $100 he owed me. That sounds like it tracks. Did you think Threads had a chance? Um, I don't know. It's still, it's a complicated situation. Because maybe, like, there was a time where I thought that, like... Twitter being ass means that it's the right opportunity for like another Twitter to show up. But I have increasingly come to this position that like Twitter is a, you cannot recreate Twitter. And it's not because it has any special sauce. It's just because it was born in a different world. And you, if you ask people to like buy into a new Twitter, you would be like, no, we know that it's fucking horrible for you now. This is like the difference between, like if you're already addicted to smoking cigarettes and someone was like, you're not addicted anymore. Do you want to try a cigarette? You would be like, absolutely not. It's going to kill me. But at the same time, if you were like, well, why don't you quit now? You're like, well, I've already come this far. You know, they, when you snapped your fingers, it didn't actually do anything. We were, we were in the middle of a thought experiment. So I don't think that... I, maybe at one point I was naive. I was like, Twitter is starting to suck. Someone should just make a new Twitter that doesn't suck and everyone can pile in. But I think that it's... Twitter is like... Um, The dude from No Country from Old Men, Four Old Men, I should say. His name is not Anton Yelchin. What's his name? Anton Chig Chigur. 
It's like he's, it, Twitter is a being that like exists out of time. It has been transplanted into the modern times. You can't remake it. Twitter be like, suck my tongue. <laughs> There's a way with words. Thoughts on Neuralink? I think you could probably derive my thoughts on Neuralink based on my thoughts on uh, augmented reality. It's tough because like I... <sighs> Let me think about this. We're on four life. I think we've got time, but we do want you to not be in position unless we run four squatted. Maybe, maybe we run four squatted and we put you up. That's three squatted. <laughs> maybe we run four squatted. This is a nice helper. Yeah. That way, the Chimera can actually summon both of its forms. And we get the mana from the front. I don't know, we might be cooked on this one. Never mind, we won. Never mind, we drew. Neuralink scares me more than it inspires me. Here's so I'm not trying to be a doomer. I'm very non-doomer, okay? But I'll just tell you my line of reasoning for this. You can remember, let's say you're 30 years old. Do you remember what life was like 10 years ago? Technology has changed a lot. It's improved a lot in the sense that like the processors got faster. Um, and you have more access to information. Do you think that that has caused your overall degree of life to improve? Are you happier now? Obviously, there's other things at play. You know, if you were 20, then you probably had less responsibility. If you're 30 now, you probably have more. For me, I feel like what actually determines the quality of my life is my habits, my relationships with the people around me, how I treat other people and how other people treat me. And that is like 90%, like a set thermostat of happiness that's at like 60. And then the, the way that I affect the world immediately around me and the way that it impacts me can change it like plus 20 or minus 20. I'm never hitting 100, but I'm never hitting zero. So I just feel like anytime people are like, this new piece of technology is going to change everything. I'm like, it might but I really feel, without becoming a caricature, I feel like it changes a lot, and then you get used to it, and the people who reap the benefits are at the top. Like, Instagram, Uber, the rise of social media, all of, all of these things over the last, like, 10 years that have, have really taken off, they have added like a little bit of like quality of life, but mostly just siphoned off other people's money and pushed it to the people who like invented it or invested it in the first place. Like I really think about like, like DoorDash, like the people who invented DoorDash think that they have done a societal good, which is crazy to me because for like a couple of years, I kind of like believed it. I was like, they're good. We used to just be able to get pizza and Chinese food delivered. We used to only be able to get pizza and Chinese food. That's crazy. Now we can get sushi delivered. Now we can get falafel delivered. Holy. Then for like a couple of years, I was like, this is amazing. And then we're like five years later. And I'm like, I wish we could. Like nowadays when my wife asked me what we should get for takeout or delivery, I'm like, please say pizza or Chinese <laughs> so that our, our $25 meal comes to like $31 with a $6 cash tip instead of $72. I don't know. It's, I don't, I'm genuinely not like cynical in the sense that I'm like, this makes the, this is killing the world. I'm more cynical in the sense that I'm like, I just feel like it, you get like a brief dopamine hit where you're like, wow, what an amazing invention. Then your level of contentness in life like acclimates to it in six months. And the only lasting impact is that you feel like you can't go back. 
This is why you end up with like people on social media are like, why aren't kids happy these days? You know, I would have killed for a smartphone in 1984. And you're like, well, yeah, obviously you would have killed for a smartphone in 1984, but they like they're they're depressed for like the same reasons that people have been depressed forever. They like have no hope for the future of the world. The economics of it are fucked up, like et cetera, et cetera. The, I've, I guess over time I've come to believe that the things that would actually make life better for people are not like momentary dopamine hits of like new technology, like, oh, that we made like Netflix too, or like, you know, you can, Amazon can deliver stuff to you in the, in the sky. And instead like fixing that housing crisis by constructing like a shitload more houses and stuff like that. And like more regulations that would force corporations to give their employees benefits or maybe even like a pension or something like that. So they don't feel like they have to leave their job once every year in order to get a salary buff because there's no corporate loyalty anymore and stuff like that. But instead, it's like, what are you complaining about, bro? There's TikTok now. And I'm like, well, I don't necessarily think TikTok's part of the problem, but I don't, I, I guess I don't think it's part of the solution. <clears throat> Pardon me. I have influenza type A. <clears throat> this got too real. It's just a, it's a person's opinion. It's not too real. You can't be allergic to some real talk. Plus, you asked. So that's why I'm cynical about AR. And maybe it's not fair to AR. Maybe it'll have more than just uh, pasta timers and HD vacuuming. But like, part of me is like, is this just DoorDash 3? Is this email again? Is this email 2? Me inventing email, this is crazy. I can talk to anybody at any point. Me using email in 2024, oh fuck. <laughs> anybody can contact me at any moment. I did read an article and it was complaining about uh, Gen Z employees entering the white collar workforce. And this is how I know I'm not out of touch. Maybe I'm out of touch with the AR, but I'm still in touch by being cool with the youth of the nation. It was like, it's very frustrating to deal with Gen Z because many of them choose not to log into their work emails when they're off the clock. And I'm like, that's fucking smart, bro. I'm not even stealing valor from millennials who have done that. Cause I understand that you're like, I can get ahead a little bit if I sign into my email when I'm at home. The problem is as soon as you cast on the yoke, you can't cast it off, right? Like that's, that's sick that when they leave their office, they're like, I'm just not gonna, look at anything related to work unless you you know pay me to look at it that's smart popcorn which is why i get pissed off because like today's friday right i know oh that's not smart <laughs> any day of the week or any any day now my accountant is going to email me and be like hey i need some more documents but like Friday at 5 p.m. rolls around and I'm like, I'm free. I don't have to worry about that email coming in. But sometimes they email me like Friday at 8 p.m. And I'm like, F, I wouldn't say the real F word to my account. I'm like, F you. <laughs> I thought we had a deal, bro. I thought that the work week was over and that means I didn't have anything to be apprehensive about. And you broke that deal by overworking yourself. And then I broke it by checking my email. Come on. By the way, I think we're cooked. What if your accountant's watching? I am basically taking their side. I'm saying it would probably be good if they could work less. What am I going to do with this? Am I going to convert you? But then we have no mana for you. Unfortunately, I think accountants are like one of those jobs where you can't work less. 
Because we'd be like, oh, well, sorry, we didn't get your taxes done by Friday at 5 p.m. I know the deadline's Monday at 8, but, you know, that's true. Job's gone. Brad, what are you going to do? But maybe, maybe the salmon of knowledge can go crazy. Enemy ailments are two times worse. It caused the enemy to have some ailments then. Caused the enemy to have some ailments then, is what I said. I don't know what I'm doing. We play in Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm gonna give you... You know how much I'd love to say no. So take this seriously. I'm going to give you a maybe on Dragon's Dogma 2. Elden Ring has been... is become abandonware from From Software. They have forgotten that it existed. They're too busy making uh, Dark Souls Mario Party, aka Armored Core. It, Dragon's Dogma might fulfill the niche. I know it's not a Souls-like game, but of like a fantasy combat RPG. I have played a little Dragon's Dogma 1. Capcom sent me a press copy of like the Director's Cut edition in like 2013. Depending on where it comes out in the release window, its length and its reception, then yes, there is a chance that I would play Dragon's Dogma 2. It could come to pass. What happens if you level up, like if you go up a tier on a tier 6 unit? You're a coward. You are a coward. I honestly was so ready for it to give me a level three tier one. <laughs> I was so prepared. You got to upgrade your PC for it? No, bro, I'll play on PS5. Why would it work like that? Little bro's never heard of an integer overflow. Sad. Let's, let's give you the experience from Quetzalcoatl. Ooh. It's capped at 30 FPS on PS5. Well, it's probably capped at like 6 FPS on my... Uh, on my PC, so... <laughs> Integer overflows to negative numbers? Uh, not if it's uh, unsigned. Dummy. <laughs> I mean, not if it's signed, not if it's unsigned, not if it's signed, dummy, not if it's unsigned, not if it's signed, not if it's signed, dummy, <laughs> not if it's unsigned, not if it's unsigned, dummy. Oh, man. Also, you, I have so many people on my side. I don't feel comfortable unless I'm hated, okay? My thoughts on the dopamine hit of like a new app that changes your life, just becoming the normal world and you lose all the dopamine associated with it, is the same way I feel about video game frame rates and graphics. When I played games on the Sony PlayStation 1, every game was 12.27 frames per second and we liked it. We went up to 30 FPS, I said, holy cow, this looks so smooth. Went up to 60 FPS, said, wow, this looks even smoother. The lasting legacy is that everything looks and I, I, my perception of it is that it's exactly the same as it was when I was playing games uh, as a 12-year-old, but I can't go back to 30, and I definitely can't go back to 12 now. So all it's done is, is saddle me with expectations. So it, I'm, I'm clinging to the 30 FPS still being, I wouldn't say my normal, but like being acceptable. I am clinging to it. Because I know as soon as I'm like, this is unacceptable, everything, 60 is the bare minimum and 90 is the, the minimum acceptable level, then it's like, I can't go back. It's like, I'm, I'm not a, a, an ophthalmologist. I'm, I'm just a philosopher, okay? There's an interesting idea to think about, right? 
Obviously, 60 is better than 30. Anybody arguing 30 is better than 60, at least from like an animation standpoint, sometimes on TV and movies, like I, I feel like 60 is like a little too fake sometimes, but that's like notwithstanding. With video games, it is going to look better in 60 than it does in 30. But like, does your brain know when you're playing something that's 60, is your brain like, oh yeah, this is so much better than 30 before you knew that 60 existed? You know what I'm saying? Because me as a 14 year old, I was playing games like sports games where the player models looked like they had a, a, a stocking over their head and their faces were like flat and blown out. And at 14 years old, I was like, that's Peter Bondra of the Washington Capitals. That's fucking his spitting image. That is photorealistic. This actually looks like it could be like me in the stadium right now. And then when you go back and look at it, it looks like it's Peter Bondra's face if someone like smashed it with a sledgehammer <laughs> until it became plasticine. And when I play games now that are new, my brain is not like, oh, this looks so much better than like Rise Son of Rome did on the Xbox One when it came out. I'm like, oh, it's the same. Like, I feel like this is the height of graphics. It activates the same neurological response within myself. But then at the end of the day, the only thing that actually lasts is that the last console games now look like total dog shit. And I've re-acclimated my set point to Rise Son of Rome 2 on the Xbox 17. That's why I think the government should make it illegal to make computers better for like 10 years. They should just, they should just hold let's not waste all this time innovating on graphics and, you know, physics engines and stuff like that. Let's spend some time iterating in another direction. How about, how about optimizing for, like, interest instead of, like, Spider-Man looks 2% more realistic in this game? You could even regress a little bit. Hang on, we have to lose this one real quick so I can come back with a fresh brain for the next one. <laughs> Make games like not 80 gigabytes? That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about, yeah. The government should uh, make it illegal or at least you have to pay like extra tariffs or something if your game is more than 20 gigabytes. At 20 gigabytes, you pay no penalties. Every 10 gigabytes over that you go, pardon me, you, play, you pay a cumulative fine that goes straight into the most based government fund. I don't know what it would be. Something related to the food bank, maybe? <laughs> Stop, this is an awful take. I get it, you're a mod on r slash battle stations. Listen, we can both make personal attacks. He will not divide us, okay? 